hello guys welcome or welcome back to my channel i know it's been a long time and i always come and go come and go and come and go but it's very hard you guys to balance life and work and then film so i'm coming on here real quick to show you guys a quick flip through of my simplify planner that i created um and launched a couple of weeks ago you guys sold me out like this <laughs> so thank you so much for those of you who supported um so i want to show you guys how to use this planner and if you have any questions just make sure to leave them down below or message me on instagram and i'll try my best to get to everybody's comments but let's go ahead and get started as you guys can see i have my planner here i think because of the lighting you can't really see the rose gold but for those of you who purchased it you know it's a cute rose gold vinyl right so we're gonna open it um so here on the left side you have a pen loop you can put your pen here a little bow that I got from TS Budgets. And then here I have like some um, sticky notes just in case. And here I have my bills card. So if you guys don't know, um, I do have three separate bank accounts. One is for bills that my husband and I share. And we just put money in there for just bills, right? No personal use or whatever. So I have bills, I have one for personal spending, and then I have my business. Those are the only three cards I have. So I keep my bills card here so I make sure that I don't go taking money out of there. <laughs> so I keep it in here with my planner. All right, so then here we have our cover page. It says Simplify Budget Planner, and then down here has my shop's name, Simple Shops, right? So when you first turn this first page, you have your top three goals and then other goals. As you guys can see, I have not been able to work on these. I know I haven't been able to work on these, but I do want to get some stickers and like decorate it real nice. Write my goals in which I honestly don't share my goals with anyone because you don't you shouldn't you shouldn't be sharing your goals. Right. You need to work quietly. So I need to do this page and then this page. And then when you flip the page, you have your monthly check-in. Now, here you have 12 boxes. Um, again, you can decorate it, add some stickers, get creative, right? You can use it for anything. So we have January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. Get creative, do a monthly check-in, whatever you want to do, right? Next, we have our monthly bills overview. Now, for this page... Like I've mentioned before on my Instagram lives, I only write my fixed expenses, right? So what are fixed expenses? Those are your bills, the bills that are there every single month that you have to pay to pay over your roof and everything, your electricity, your water, whatever it is, right? You write it here, you write your due date, your bills, the amount, and if it's auto pay, yes or no. So as you guys can see, I have four bills. I have my rent, my Verizon, which is my Wi-Fi, my Con Edison, which is my electricity, and then cell phones. And those are my essential bills. So those are the only bills that I will put on here. Now, next to monthly bills overview, we have our bills pay tracker. As you guys can see, I have my rent, my Verizon, Con Edison, T-Mobile, Gym, Inc., and Ring. Now, here we included our subscriptions, and I will get to that on the next page. So... You color these in. I use highlighters to color these in. We are up to date with all of our bills, July, right? So then we move on to the next page. This is where I was talking about subscriptions. So this page, I only use it for subscriptions. As you guys can see, we have our HP ink, which is my ink for my work. Then my husband's gym, our ring camera, and then my husband and my kids game system right so as you can see here we only have our fixed expenses our bills are essentials right so we need to always cover this before anything else here we have our subscriptions right so these are things that can change over time you can cancel it right you can't cancel your rent you can't cancel your your verizon uh your electricity you can't cancel right these are your essentials these non-essentials so here this is why i keep only subscriptions so then you choose if it's a monthly subscription if it's an annually or and if it's auto renew so that's where i keep my subscriptions next to this page we have our debt overview i am debt free consumer debt free so my only debt is my student loan of thirty five thousand dollars so this is what i write it down 
due date it's on the first creditor is student loan monthly minimum i won't know until they resume back in october and my balance is thirty five thousand dollars here since i don't have any consumer debt these are here just in case we do something happens boom i have these here so i only have two of these but i did give you guys six just in case next we have our investment tracker you guys i am not good with investment so the only reason why i added this page was because people were asking for an investment tracker i only added one but if you want to buy more than one investment tracker, then I will have that option for you guys soon. But as you guys can see, it's empty. I don't invest. I should be, but I'm not investing right now. Anyways, monthly debt tracker. So when you first get your planner, right, you're going to see this page after investment tracker. What I want you guys to do is to write June. Why June is because when I prepared your planner, the only the months that I added to your planner was July, August, September, October, November, December. That's six months worth of inserts, right? So if you flip the next page, you can see it's July. We start with July. But once the year is over and you're done with filling out all of these from July to December, you're going to go ahead and pull this out, right? And you're going to add the January to June. And this is going to be the last sheet for the month of June. So make sure you guys are writing this. Write the month of June here. So for next year, once you insert, you, once you put in the inserts for January to June, this will be the last page you're going to have on your planner. Let's move on. July. This is where we started, right? This is our spreadsheet for the month of July. So as I've mentioned before, I like to color coordinate my bills, right? So here we got paid on the 7th and then on the 21st. I like to split my bills according to the dates, right? Like when do I get paid? What days do my bills got to get paid? So let's say here's payday. Anything before the 7th up until a day before my next paycheck, I put this beige color. I have to pay all these bills, right? with this paycheck now for the next payday we have the 21st is a pink color so on this day all the from from the 21st up until the next paycheck i will be paying anything that lands on the 21st and after until the next time you get paid i hope that makes sense so as you can see rent rent i'm splitting it into two so for this paycheck i'm putting half of the rent and then for this paycheck i'm putting half this is another different video i need to do actually i do have a video explaining this so if you guys want to go back and find that video boom you could do that right we added a little sticker here right so then next you have your paycheck breakdown so here we have our essentials and then non-essentials so you have your fixed expenses which are your bills that you have to cover first and then you have your variable expenses, which is your daily use, like your groceries, your spending, self-care, household. Boom, you got that covered. Next sheet on the side, we have our debt and sinking funds. So once you have your bills covered and your variable expenses covered, you move on to your debt. And whatever's left from this, you covered and put towards sinking funds. So as you guys can see, for this paycheck, we're paying Verizon, and then we also paying Con Edison, and then half a rent. So what did I do? I went to my first paycheck breakdown, and I wrote rent. I'm putting half with this paycheck. I'm paying for Verizon, and then I'm paying for Con Edison. We got paid $1,000. The total is $700. You have left $299.67. So we're going to take this amount and spread it here, put it for our variable expenses, grocery spending, self-care, household miscellaneous, and Duncan, of course, my Duncan. So the total here is 200. I have left $99.67. So we're adding this to our student loan, right? So for my sinking funds, I usually add like for the last paycheck or like with my work paycheck. My work paycheck is not included here for you guys to see. It's only visible for me, but maybe later on I'll decide if I want to show that. But anyways, right? Here we have the next page, we have our weekly expenses 
for this check, right? So as you guys can see here, our variable expense, we have $200 for um, variable expenses, daily use. And that's where we will put it here, write all of your weekly expenses, how much you spend throughout the whole week, week of seven, three to seven, nine. And then down here, you can see how much you budgeted, $200. You budgeted $200. How much you spend, you add this up, 128. And then if you do the math, I have $72 left. What did I do with that 72? I added it to my notes that I'm going to put it in my high yield savings. So this is my rollover money, right? And then you do the same with the next paycheck. So this paycheck, right? We're going to go back to the calendar. In the calendar for payday number two, we're paying for our HP Inc., our gym, ring, cell phone, and then our game system and that's what and then of course half for our rent we'll add that here add it up how much you stay with then we'll add it to our variable expenses if you have money left you add it to your debt you have money left you add it to your sinking funds and that's how it goes you guys so once you do that again every chat every week you get a weekly expense tracker and a notes section and then at the end of the month, you get your sinking funds tracker and a monthly debt tracker. So let's say here for student loan, we're going to write student loan. Um, my starting balance was $35,000. Now I put $100. So what's what's my, my progress? I paid off $100, right? So then here, my sinking funds, since I added some stuff to my sinking funds, like my month ahead, my kiddos, You'll go to your sinking funds tracker every month. Make sure to write the month up here. And you're going to write every single category, how much you started with. If you started with $0, you put 0. Your ending balance, you ended up, you ended the month with 100. How much was your progress? You'll, you'll put plus 100. So then you add that up here, and you'll see how much you saved towards your sinking funds. And then that is it, you guys. You have the same sheets for every single month, and like that, you guys can keep track of your expenses, your bills, when they need to be paid, and then you're giving every dollar a home. Um, that's why it's called a simplified planner. If you guys are looking for a life planner where you can track your water intake, I'm telling you right now, this is not the planner for you. This is only budgeting related, you guys. Well, that is it, you guys. My phone battery is dying. <laughs> um, I'm going to go live tonight. Today's Friday. We usually go live from 10 p.m. 3 in the morning while I work on orders. So thank you so much for tuning in. And I will catch you guys on my next video. Bye.